I'm gonna simplify the concept of proprioception for you guys, but I want you to follow me outside for a second. I know oftentimes as you guys are in this process of studying and trying to memorize these concepts like proprioception, Golgi tendon organs, muscle spindles, right? You're in front of a computer screen, so it's like, hey, I'm in beautiful South Florida. Let's get outside to better understand this concept. And part of it is because if you guys think about proprioception, oftentimes you'll see it defined or kind of simply broken down as body awareness, which is not a bad way of thinking about it, but there's more going on than that. Proprioception is all about all the information that your body is constantly taking in, right? I gotta throw my sunglasses on because the light's coming in so much here. And it's our vision, it's everything else, it's our, it's our pressure receptors in our feet. Um, and specifically, when you guys are studying for your NASM materials, that important element of proprioception is your Golgi tendon organs and your muscle spindles. And this is where it really all starts to tie back together. Proprioception, this thing that we're trying to train, which is understanding where my body is in space and time, even if I close my eyes. So it's like, how does my body do that? Well, Golgi tendon organs and muscle spindles are the key, all right? Not only do you need to know them for your exam, but this stuff is massively important as we understand body position, flexibility, so many concepts that they tie back into. The first one, muscle spindles. Just so we're all on the same page of understanding what we're looking at here, you guys have learned muscle spindles, they live in the belly of your actual muscle muscle fiber. So if I'm talking about my gastroc, those calf muscles, right? My muscle spindle lives in the belly of that muscle fiber. And what does it sense? It senses how quickly, how rapidly that muscle is changing length. It's got less to do with tension. It's more about how rapidly it changes length. Now the cool thing is, when we start thinking about this from an application standpoint, this ties in very closely to the stretch shortening cycle, right? This complex and this understanding that as we have a muscle that rapidly stretches, because of our muscle spindle, right? Even here as I'm doing these little pogo hops, right? I'm getting this quick, rapid stretch in that gas rock. And what happens is neurologically, right? It's a reflex, you don't think about it. It goes straight to your spinal cord and it tells that muscle to what? Contract. And from a performance standpoint, that's where plyometrics is a great opportunity to take advantage of that stretch shortening cycle in your muscle spindles, right? So it's an actual trainable thing. We think about it sometimes also as protective because also this is the extreme version of me quickly and rapidly changing the length of the muscle, but it's always active. It's always sending your brain and sending your spinal cord just information about where are my muscles as far as length, where's my body position, and over time we use that. And that's a missing element for a lot of people. One of the great things about this NASM OPT model approach is training that neurological system. All right, so we got muscle spindles. Those are a part of that proprioception. Now, we're gonna see, I'm gonna try not to hurt myself over here as well, but I wanna give you guys a good visual for Golgi tendon organs. So if our muscle spindles, these mechanoreceptors that live in the belly of the muscle fiber and they sense how rapidly they change length, well, Golgi tendon organs, all right, listen to the word, Golgi tendon, all right, in the tendon, those live in the tendons of all of our muscles, right? So it's less to do with the muscle belly and more with the tendon. And rather than sense how rapidly they're changing length, these are more sensitive to actual tension and force. So they're sensing how much is the force and how quickly is it changing in the actual tendon. If you think about it from a protective standpoint, all right, let's just say, no clue how heavy this tire is, guys. It looks really heavy, all right? So I'm probably not gonna try to come over here and just drop down and lift it. But if I did, right, just thinking about what's happening, even in the bicep tendon, all right, Strongman competitions, if you guys have ever watched like World Strongest Man, Strongest Woman, crazy, but things like bicep tears are not uncommon. If we think about what the muscle spindle and the Golgi tendon organs doing here, that GTO, when I go to lift up, automatically, if I have a little bend in that elbow, I'm gonna generate a lot more tension in that tendon, all right? Now, my body is smart. It doesn't want you to hurt yourself. So from a protective standpoint, what happens if I sense a lot of tension in there, it does the opposite of the muscle spindle. Instead of telling that muscle to contract, it actually gives us neurological inhibition. It tells the muscle to relax. So it does the opposite here, all right? So again, I'm not gonna try to impress you guys and lift the tire. Hopefully you guys get the picture. And that is another extreme example where our body's protecting us, but it's always giving us information. And the cool thing is the muscle spindles, the Golgi tendon organs, not just in our bigger muscles, but our smaller muscles, even the little tiny muscles that connect our little spinous processes, they're giving us lots of information. They're very rich. 
in these sensory receptors, muscle spindles, Golgi tendon organs. So it ends up giving our nervous system and our brain a lot of information about where we are. Now my quick application of that, especially to flexibility, is oftentimes, even as we go into, let's say something like a, like a lateral lunge or a Cossack squat, this is a position that a lot of people struggle with, right? Your body's not used to being here. And initially, as I go into that stretch, even though I'm not going fast, I'm getting some muscle spindle activity. Now, what does that do? It tells the muscles to stay contracted. That's one of the reasons why initially when I get here, I'm like, oof, might feel a little tight. And then give it 20 to 30 seconds, and what happens? Muscle spindle activity decreases, right? Which tells my brain and my nervous system, hey, guess what? It's safe, you can go a little bit further. So just showcasing the fact that muscle spindles, Golgi tendon organs, this idea of proprioception, it's all about giving our body information about where we are in space and time, and it really ties into a lot of concepts. Everything from sports performance, when you guys get into studying plyometrics and the stretch shortening cycle, the muscle spindles will come into play there. And also when you guys get back into the flexibility chapter and understanding the fact that your brain oftentimes just doesn't trust you because you might be weak in a certain position or you haven't gone there in a while, all right? So hopefully this helped you guys bring to life a couple of these concepts around proprioception, Golgi tendons, muscle spindles, this stuff is kind of hard to just pull out of the textbook, but bringing it out into the real world and giving you an idea of how this stuff is gonna relate to when you're actually training clients in the gym, which is what really matters. So if you guys got something out of this video, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, trying to constantly give you guys practical information you can use to not only pass your NASM exam, but to go on and serve people out there in the real world. All right, so get after it, I'll see you soon.